Hi. I had a discussion recently with uh, two colleagues of mine uh, how, how to raise the adoption. They, have, they are dealing with a very large customer uh, using Office 365 for over two years now. Um, and uh, they had some issues to capture the attention of people because they don't have time to get trained. Uh, they don't go visit the resources that are available to get trained and they're not using the technology as much as they could and so we had a discussion I want to share you some the way I, I addressed the, the is this issue in the past and how you can raise adoption the first I think it's mostly a matter of methodology um, because when you build a plan about raising the adoption and you have several steps uh, defined and you follow the steps and maybe, maybe even if you have to adjust to the company or the organization culture um, it's it's good to have a framework so you can run through the framework because there's not one solution that will work for everybody it will really depend on the customer background and and especially the customer perception of the technology. So first, I think in terms of methodology, you need to redo an assessment to better understand <coughs> uh, first, what is the problem? What are the issues? So you need to gather some data about the usage. So you have the dashboard in Office 365, so you can see who's using what, and maybe a little bit have an an idea where you need to <coughs> put some focus um, but also you can do a survey asking people if uh, with uh, specific questions about what you find out in the in the digital dashboard uh, to better understand what are the reasons why they're not using such such features but that's just data that that does that doesn't give you the story behind the scene. You don't know why people are not using it really. Even with a survey, you might not have the right in level of information. So I um, suggest to uh, do some interviews, and interviews are really key in, in assessment because through a panel of people that are representative of your workforce, you can identify maybe big blockers. Uh, and also to better understand their needs, what the work is, and figure out how the technology can change their life. Um, and and <coughs> because you understand the technology, so you discuss, but you might not understand their work, their day to day work, and their pain. And so, you having this discussion um, with a few people within the organization, you can. Um, Maybe you can find out what a few interesting points where you can maybe teach them how to better use the technology, but also maybe how to reorganize the way they work and and bring them some value. <coughs> because to raise the adoption, you need first to capture people so they listen to the message you want to to share with them so you need to understand also when you interview them uh, how they hear the message how do they receive the message maybe they don't read emails coming from your communication uh, department maybe they don't read emails coming from your uh, <coughs> IT department maybe they don't come to your road shows or your showrooms or office hours for a reason so have a discussion too on why they're not reading the emails or why they're not thinking that the emails are interesting why they're not coming to the office hours maybe it's because it's uh, the time of the office hours maybe it's a format it's too long too short maybe it's not at the appropriate time in the day or maybe it's not the appropriate time in the month um, maybe they heard that the content was not <coughs> satisfying for them so discuss that to find out 
what will be the best format and also what will be good content, what kind of content they will uh, enjoy to find. Because you need to create the, some sort of desire of listening to what you have to say and also a desire to learn. And usually you don't want to learn when you don't see the return on investment. So it's key to figure out what are the scenarios, the use cases that will change your life. <coughs> and then you need to, after doing this assessment, you need to build your strategy, how you deliver uh, the message uh, or the training. And um, there are several ways to do it, but uh, keep in mind that it's key to rehearse the message and probably rehearse the training. And <coughs> one a good way to me is uh, to leverage people because when when the message or the or the training is coming from a central organization, eh, sometimes people don't think it's valuable because it's not adapted to their environment, their work, it even not even their wording. Um, so if you can first train champions uh, and recruit champions of champions community so the, the, they can explain what they learn and contextualize to the context of the, of the department or of the role they, they're working with, um, that will be better and, and also it will help you to leverage the, the communication and the training. Uh, all around the, the company and you need to know also that you cannot convince everybody so it's a bell curve you have only 50 percent of the population who's willing really to change and um, maybe 10 percent who are not willing to change at all so don't focus too much on the people who don't want to change except if you think that you can convince them because if you can uh, transform a no sayer in a naysayer in a yes sayer that will be a huge value especially if you uh, tell him to testify in a way to tell his story so you can share this story with other people and maybe seeing that somebody who was uh, technophobic or who didn't like the technology and how many times we heard I hate SharePoint and and there were good reasons in the past because SharePoint was not really uh, user-friendly, complicated, there are uh, issues with permissions, and but it had changed and people still think that it, it's working the same way. And so if you can convince somebody who's really a naysayer and to a yes -er because you coach him and you show him that he will ch change his life, that's that's gonna be super powerful, but don't focus too much time on that. Yeah. Um, so really here is key to leverage the champions and train them and, and discuss with them also after the interviews on what the technology can bring to their day-to-day -day work. And so maybe they can also translate it to the work of their colleagues. Um, and then build your and adapt your strategy Maybe you need to have office hours, regular uh, presentation, demonstration, or uh, meetings where you can answer any qu kind of questions. Um, but don't do it <coughs> too much in an assistance mode because you want people to learn and not only to uh, answer the question and you don't want them to not learn and come back every time they have the same question because then <coughs> they they you won't have a lot of leverage this way so my really my recommendation is to try to build a change management program where you can uh, really demonstrate what has a value and do that through the champions community so they can put their words in it put some context in it uh, even if they're not perfect, at least they 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 can um, more easily convince their colleagues to come and visit. <coughs> so it's a good idea. And also, if they can 
bring some value for sure, but also some emotion in a way. So they, 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 they are excited about the change because it's the change uh, or the new features they're using or the way they're using the technology change their life and they're excited about it and they just want to transmit it just like um, in, in, in your normal life you like to tell people good good news and, and so uh, if it's coming from champions that are uh, <coughs> that are working with well, their peers it's it will have a, a big impact it's coming from IT it's not the same thing because there's a bias uh, often so people listen less um, so uh, and, and finally uh, gather resources uh, so you can log what what I've been said and you can share it more broadly maybe you can create a community in different tools maybe if you have teams or Yammer if you have a forum solution you can <coughs> share this, this expertise and and share your knowledge and your findings with a broader audience but from time to time gather and, and do some demonstration even if it's online even in your COVID-19 era you can do things online it's better to do it on site if it's possible but sometimes online is, is the only solution because you're an international company or you spread company or because of COVID so <coughs> but do do it re uh, recurringly, regularly, because it's key for people to understand that <coughs> it's technology, especially cloud technology, is evolving all the time. So you need to um, make people understand that the learning path is perpetual, and <coughs> it should be a, an su such an effort. Um, so if you make an effort a little bit every every day it's better than doing a, a big effort at the beginning and stop the effort just like when you go to the gym if you can just do a one day big <coughs> um, work at, at the fitness center it won't worth uh, half an hour an hour two hours per, per day or per week for uh, two years for example so the intensity is not that much important that doesn't have that much of importance the continuity and uh, <coughs> it and, and since it's becoming a routine then uh, when you have a routine you don't see the effort that much so that was my tip of the day of the weekend I hope you will have a great weekend and hope you will be able to raise uh, the adoption and it's it's not a an, an easy task and because it requires to be in a infinite game mode just like said Simon Sinek enjoy